Hi everybody, it's Auntie Megan again, and today we are going to read chapter 7 of the Boxcar Children. This chapter is called A Big Meal from Little Onions. So, if everyone is ready, we'll go ahead and get started. The next morning, Jesse and Henry talked about the queer noise. They did not tell Violet and Benny. What do you think it was? asked Jesse. Do you think it was a rabbit? I don't know, said Henry, but I think someone was in the woods. I'm glad we weren't hurt. Someone must have stepped on a stick and made it crack. What shall we do? asked Jesse. Nothing, said Henry. Watch is a good watchdog. He loves us now, and if anyone tried to hurt us, Watch would take care of us. He would do more than growl. But after this, we must not let Benny go into the woods alone. I'll keep Benny and Violet with me all the time, said Jesse. Good, said Henry. And we and keep watch with you all the time. Good morning, Benny. Time to get up. Today you must build something for me out of stones. What is it? asked Benny eagerly. I'm not going to tell you, said Henry, laughing. You build it just as Jesse tells you, and you will see. Henry was so eager to begin work that he ran all the way to town. The doctor came to the door and smilingly looked at him over from head to foot. My mother will tell you what to do today, said the doctor. She wants you to work in her garden. Miss Moore, the doctor's mother, had a sweet face and looked very kind. Good morning, Henry. Do you know how to thin out vegetables? Oh, yes, said Henry. I like to work in a vegetable garden. I haven't had much time to take care of my garden, Miss Moore said. There, see that? She pulled out a carrot. It had come out for as much too near the other carrots. Yes, I see, said Henry. He began to thin out the carrots. Miss Moore watched him as he pulled out some of the little carrots and put them in a pile. He left the other carrots to grow. Then he began on the turnips. You are a good worker, said Miss Moore. I can see that. She smiled at Henry. You may thin out all the vegetables. Then she went into the house and left Henry alone. He worked all morning. He thinned out the carrots, turnips, and little onions. The mill bells rang out at noon, but Henry did not hear them. He still worked on in the hot sun. Then he saw Miss Moore looking at him. You have worked long enough now, she said. You may come again this afternoon. What shall I do with the vegetables I pulled up? Henry asked. Oh, I don't want them, said Miss Moore. Just leave them in a pile. Do you mind if I take them? asked Henry. No, indeed. Do you have chickens? Then, without waiting for an answer, she went right on. You have done good work. Here is a dollar. Henry said, thank you. And he was glad he did not have to answer about the chickens. When Miss Moore went into the house, he took some of the little carrots and turnips and onions. If he looked up, he would have seen Miss Moore in the window watching him. But he did not look up. He was too eager to get to the store and order some meat. When he arrived at the boxcar, Benny told him, the building is done. I helped with it. The building was a fireplace made of flat stones. Benny did a lot of the work, said Jesse. He carried the stones and found the wood for the fire. The fireplace was a good one. The children and watched had made a hole at the foot of the big rock between two trees. Flat stones were made on the floor of this hole and around the sides. More big stones were put up to keep out the wind. Jesse had found a heavy wire in the dump and had put the kettle on it and tied the ends of the wire to the two trees. The kettle hung over the fireplace and the fire was laid. Beside the fireplace was a big wood pile. Fine, fine, cried Henry. You have done well. Now see what I have. The girls were delighted with the meat and the little vegetables. With Henry's knife, they cut the meat into little pieces. Then they filled the kettle with water from the fountain and put the meat on it with a tin plate for a cover. 
Henry started the fire and it burned well at once. Jesse cut the tops off the vegetables and washed them in the brook. I'll put them af in after the meat has cooked a while, she said. Soon, the water began to boil and the stew began to smell good. Watch sat down and looked at it. He sniffed hungrily and barked and barked. The children sat around the fireplace eating bread and milk. Now and then, Jessie stirred the stew with a big spoon. It will make a good meal, said Henry. Keep it boiling and do not leave it. When I come tonight, I'll bring you some salt. And whatever you do, don't get on fire. Violet pointed to the pitcher and the teapot that she had filled with water. That's to put on Benny or watch if he should get on the fire, she said. Henry laughed and went happily on his way. He wished he could stay and smell the stew boiling, but he thought he ought to he thought he ought to work. Soon he went back to Dr. Moore's house. He was very happy when Dr. Moore said, Do you want to clean up this garage? The garage was not in very good order. Dr. Moore laughed when he saw Henry look around for a broom. I must go out now, said Dr. Moore. You just clean this place up. Henry began at once. First, he opened all the boxes. On the biggest box, he painted the word tools with a long handled brush and a can of paint he found. On another box, he painted nails. Then he picked over all the things and put the tools in the toolbox and the nails in the nail box. This was very fun for Henry because he liked to get things in order. Henry found a lot of nails that were bent and covered with rust. He put them in his pocket. I'll ask the doctor for these bent nails, he said to himself. They are no good to him, but they are fine for me. I can use every old nail I get. Then he washed the floor and washed his paintbrush. When Dr. Moore came home, he found Henry putting brushes, paint cans, and other things on a shelf. My, 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 he cried. He looked at the garage and laughed and laughed and laughed. He laughed until his mother came to see what he was laughing at. Look, mother, he said, look at these tools. Look at the shelf. Look at my hammers. One, two, three, four hammers. Your hammer, my hammer, and two other hammers. They were all lost. Can you use a hammer, Henry? Yes, indeed, I can, cried Henry. Take one. You found them all. Oh, thank you, said Henry. He showed the doctor the bent nails and were told that he could have those too. He could hardly wait to start home because he was so eager to show Benny and his sisters his new hammer and nails. Tomorrow will be Sunday, said Dr. Moore. Will you come again the next day? Oh, yes, replied Henry, who had lost track of all the days. The cherries must be picked, said the doctor. He looked at Henry with a queer way. We could use any number of cherry pickers if they were all as careful as you. Could you, asked Henry eagerly. Well, I'll come. So the three said goodbye and Henry started for home. He had another dollar, a pocket full of nails, and a hammer, and the pile of vegetables he had left at noon. On the way home, he bought some salt. When he arrived at the boxcar, he began to smell delicious smells. Onions, he shouted, running up to the kettle. I do like the smell of onions. I like the turnips best, said Violet. Jessie took the cover off carefully and stirred in the salt and Henry sniffed at the brown stew. It was boiling and boiling. A ladle of all things, cried Henry. Where did you get it? I found a tin cup in the dump. We used a long stick for a handle and tied the cup with a piece of wire. It makes a fine ladle. She ladled out the stew into plates and bowls and put, this, put a spoon in each one. Oh, oh, said Benny, I am so hungry. I must eat my supper. The meat was well cooked and the vegetables were delicious. Violet passed her plate for more turnips. I'd like some more onions, said Henry. All the children ate until they could eat no more. That was the best meal I ever ate, said Jessie. Me too, said Violet. I have time tonight to make Benny's cart, remarked Henry. 
We will want a cart. Will you make it with my wheels? asked Benny. Yes, with your wheels, asked, answered Henry. But you must cart stones in it when I get it done. Yes, said Benny. I will cart stones or rocks or anything. Tomorrow will be Sunday and I can stay at home, Henry went on. Do you think it's all right, Jesse, to build a, build the dam for swimming for a swimming pool on Sunday? Yes, I do, said Jesse. We are making the swimming pool so we can keep clean. Henry began happily to hammer out the bent nails with his new hammer. Soon he had some good nails. You and I will go find some boards, Benny, he said. Come on. Soon the boys came back with some boards from the dump. Henry sat down and began to make a cart. He could not see well because it was getting dark and there was no moon. But at last the cart was done and he gave it to Benny. Thank you, said Benny politely. After his sisters had admired the cart, Benny pulled it around just for fun. Then Henry put it in the boxcar for the night. Henry said to Jesse, I hope we do not hear that queer noise tonight. I hope not too, said Jesse. Then she laughed, look at Benny. She said, he has gone to sleep with his hand on his cart. Henry laughed too, but he laughed at himself because he was going to sleep with his new hammer under his pillow. And that is the end of chapter seven of the Boxcar Children. Next time we will get to chapter eight. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Ciao.